and welcome to Ask Claire, our Women's Health Q&A every Monday at 12.30. Um, remember to send me your questions. You can send us a DM or you can even just comment on these posts to um, have your question answered. Um, November, we are talking women's health. Uh, of course we're talking. We're talking heart disease. So particularly in postmenopausal women, heart disease is a, the leading cause of death in women. So it kind of feels like maybe that should have been what we started on in a women's health chat, but here I am three months later doing it. Um, I'm just going to sit and talk to you here today because even though it being the leading cause of death is a big deal, I still feel like we don't understand exactly how seriously we need to take it. And then in the next three weeks, I'm going to show you what to do about it in terms of prevention and management. So just to put it in perspective, one in four women will die of heart disease. Um, nearly three times as many women will die of heart disease than breast cancer. Uh, in Australia, 90% of women have at least one risk factor and 50% have two or more. Um, heart disease refers to a variety of specific of, of types of problems that affect the heart and also blood vessels. Um, the most common type of heart disease is coronary heart disease, and we can also call it cardiovascular disease, which is disease of the blood vessels. So it's kind of like diseases of your heart and circulatory system, including your blood vessels. Um, so symptoms of a heart attack will vary between men and women. So a heart attack is where there's a full or partial blockage in your heart and it stops or it goes out of rhythm. Um, the women are more likely to experience non-typical symptoms like heartburn, back pain, discomfort actually anywhere or pain in the jaw, down the arm. Uh, and they can, they can last a few days, they can come and go, they can be like just general discomfort or they can be serious pain. Um, whereas men are more likely to have the heart pain down the left side. Women can also just short, have experienced shortness of breath, dizziness, nausea, vomiting. Um, and, and it's not exclusive to women. So some men will have symptoms like this, but less commonly. And women more commonly will have accompanying symptoms, okay? Um, stomach pain, that sort of thing. Now, emotional stress can play a, a huge role in triggering a heart, heart attack symptoms. Um, and it's been noted that women will often have symptoms while resting or even while sleeping. So those are the major differences um, between men and women with a heart attack. Um, but heart disease encompasses, as I said, other diseases uh, like uh, high blood pressure, that sort of thing. Now, I said before 90% of women have one risk factor and I want to read out to you the risks that we can control and then we'll have a brief look at the risks we can't control. What we can control is our hip to waist ratio. So basically if your waist is bigger than your hips, okay, that is a risk factor for developing heart disease. Smoking your eating habits, uh, physical activity, if you're sedentary, that's a risk factor. Uh, alcohol, stress, and I'll go into this a little more. Long-term physical, emotional, um, phys psychological, physical or emotional stress will raise your risk of heart disease. And if you have heart disease, long-term stress makes it more likely for you to have a heart attack. Now remember, it's not just, you know, emotional stress of having a fight with someone. It can be physical stress too, and it can be psychological. It can be you imagining having a fight with someone. Um, stress includes emotionally upsetting events, especially involving anger. Um, and you're also more likely to eat unhealthy foods, engage in unhealthy behaviours, drink more alcohol, et cetera, et cetera. So... Blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, which is a group of diseases that are related to your metabolism. Um, 
your metabolism is the process by which you convert food into energy. And when you have dysfunctions in this, it raises or significantly, it actually doubles your risk of um, heart disease. So you have metabolic syndrome if you have three of these five factors. So a waist measurement of more than 35 inches, approximately 70 centimetres. Triglyceride level greater than 150 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, high HDL, oh, sorry, low HDL cholesterol. Blood pressure of 130 over 35 or higher. Blood glucose greater than 110 milligrams uh, per deciliter after fasting. So uh, it's important we uh, get those diseases diagnosed properly. Don't just guess. Um, and uh, the doctor will tell you if you have metabolic syndrome. Uh, excessive blood clotting, lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, depression, sleep apnea, and C-reactive protein. Thank you. I just had a delivery. Now, risk factors. Now, we can control all those things with stress management, with healthy eating, with um, healthy activity. But a problem for us in the modern era is what's normal, what we see as normal, we equate with healthy. And that's actually not the case with a lot of things, okay? So healthy eating and healthy lifestyle may feel quite extreme if you're used to eating out or having treats after school or not exercising beyond walking a couple of times a week, okay? So just be mentally prepared for that, but you will be okay. Now, things we can't control, age, menopause is a huge one for women your family history, your race, ethnicity, and your pregnancy history. Now, the most common risks affecting women are high cholesterol, being overweight, and physical inactivity. Now, those are the most common risks for heart disease, and they are also all in the we can control category. So the next three weeks, I'm going to show you ways to control your risk and the same strategies can be used to manage your disease if you already have it and reduce your risk of a repeated attack. I'll see you next week.